In this video, we will be assembling the long hair laser engraver, the B1 40 watt. Now, it is listed as 48 watts, between 44 and 48 watts. Well, you see, this particular laser has been sent to me by a long hair for the purpose of making a video, but no money has exchanged hands, which means I could be honest, and I certainly will be. But I have to admit, so far, I'm pretty impressed. Now, I've already got the long air raised 5 uh, 20 watt laser, and I've actually had pretty good results with that so far. I'm quite happy with it. But this one is a much bigger beast. And on analysing while I was doing an unboxing video, I have to admit it's very well thought out. And you know what? It's also got a big red switch. Well, of course, that's got to be a, that's got to be a setting point, hasn't it? The big red. Okay, anyway. Should we get to it? I think we should. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use the overhead camera. Yes, we are. There it is. You see. All right. Now, I've been fiddling in the box that I have in my cardboard box. And as you can see, we've got all these different components. I'm going to move this out of the way in a moment. But just to show you what's in the box, we have the front and back rails here. Oh, here we go, that one. And uh, get it out, that one. All right. We've also got the side rails. And uh, we've got the manual here, which is about half the size of the last manual on the uh, Ray 5. There's very few stages with this particular laser. It looks extremely easy to put together. Now, it's probably because a lot of the uh, parts of this laser are integrated, such as the cables and what have you. They're like hidden in the rails. So for me, I think that's a brilliant idea. Looks neat, looks tidy, less likely to get tangled up on stuff, you see. It looks just like that. Neat and tidy. Now, my Ray 5 laser, I had to earth because there was static build-up. And it become, I uh, had to put it, very, very important that I did so. Because what's happening is it was causing an interference in the connection with the computer and then the burn would stop. But I sorted it out. It was easily done. I might make a video. Now, I'll move it out of the way over there and we'll remove some of the components out of the box. Now, I've got a little pot there we can use for putting little screws and stuff. And we have this uh, component here. Actually, do you know what might be a good idea? What does the manual say well it shows you on the packing list here everything that is included we've got some m5s m2s uh yeah we've got 16 m54s and we've got some 12 millimeter m54s so they're quite small um little bolts now i've got an allen key ready to go it comes with a key yes it has a key <laughs> don't worry it's not gonna drive off on you no it comes with the air pump now, the Raise 5 did not come with the uh, air pump. You have to buy it separately. Uh, it's got the laser module with the uh, air assist on there. Uh, you've got some goggles, cables, and what have you. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty much all there. But what does the manual say? What is stage one? What pieces do I need? Well, I need, well, part one, which is to prepare. Left frame, right frame, X axis frame now the x-axis frame is the frame that holds the actual laser itself so i just got this out of the box and i didn't really need to yet no. so i need x and y axis axis oh, okay there it is see how bigger this thing is crikey it's huge right and then we've got two rails these are the two side rails that's what i need apparently i don't know which is which but i need two of them yeah, there's one. And, oh, found the other one. The other one is underneath a piece of foam. There's the other one. What way around it goes, I do not know yet. Now, looking at it, I imagine, move this box right out of the way. I just don't interfere. All right, now looking at it, I imagine, I imagine, oh, crikey. Which way round does it go? Oh, blimey. me. Right, might have to move the camera up a bit, actually, to get you all in. There we go. Up we go. There you are. Right. This is one of the side rails. It has a little place here for the uh, stepper motor belt. 
the timing belt to go around. And so has this one. Yes, it has. There it is. So you've got one, one of these on each of the actual side rails. But I still haven't worked out what we were yet. <laughs> I think some of the, the distractions. I should have analysed this first, shouldn't I? Uh, okay. After installing the profile uh, into the rollers, basically. Right frame and left frame. Okay, so one of these is slightly different from the other one. So the one with all the cables and the motors uh, and the step and the what is on there? So oh no, just the cables attached to that one. Yes. So one with the cables, I imagine would go on the left hand side. So the right frame, left frame. Okay. Doesn't really tell. It. How do you know? Is it marked? That'd be a good idea, is it? Is it actually mark left and right frame? No, that one isn't. Now, look, looking at it, the controller's on the left-hand side, so I imagine this lot here goes on the left-hand side. And the profile, uh, looking at this, the square of the profile, uh -huh, which is this piece here, this the square of the profile. It's like, uh, it's like an aircraft aluminium extrusion. Now I know that cable one's going to go on the left because where the uh, controller is. And looking at it, that extrusion part goes to the against the inside, maybe, or does it go against the outside? See, the problem with these instructions, all the little details are so small. It's okay if you've got really good eyesight; they really ought to. Um, it's my first complaint. Um, to actually increase the size of these drawings. And the writing, the writing's not too bad, but the, the, these drawings, the details on the drawings, could do with being a lot bigger. They really could. Now, it should be self-explanatory what way round it goes. Does it go to the inside or the outside? It doesn't actually show you that. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. So I'm trying, the things you see, I'm doing this as though I'm a layman and I've never done this before. Well, I've only done it once and not on this machine. So, I'll make an assumption here, so that's going to go that way round, with the laser mount towards you. So we've got a rail here, looking at it, then that rounded bit goes to the outside, a bit with a little angle, it's got a little, yeah, a little chamfer on there, on the extrusion, and that should then thread in between the actual rollers you see those rollers there and that slides in those rollers so an easier way to see that or not you can't see it because it is all enclosed so that's where it's very different to the actual raise five the raise five was not it's not enclosed which potentially is uh is a risk isn't it that you could you could get caught up on something and here we have the right hand side rail we'll do the same thing again if i show you here I hope you can see that there. You can see those rollers there. There's uh, four in this on this one. There's four rollers on the raised five. There's actually three rollers: two at the top and two at the bottom. This one, uh, two, two, at the, two at the uh, top and one at the bottom. Remember rightly. And this one's two at the top and two at the bottom. So it's you know it is definitely better in that sense. So now I've got to slide this rail into here as per the instructions. I hope I got it right. Last time I, I put the well when I put the race five together, I made a silly mistake and had to undo it all. But I included it in the video because it's honest, isn't it? See? It's the thing when you do things like this, you, you want to be honest, don't you? Yeah, just try to hide your mistakes if this thing's a bit, a bit silly. Right, so that is all it's asking you to do in the, at this stage. It says pay attention to the adjusting nut to prevent the roller from being damaged by the groove. Pay attention to adjusting that. I can see the adjusting that. Right, let's have that. I've already put it in anyway, but. Oh, I see. As there is an adjusting that that could potentially be in the way, but it wasn't in this case. Right, so. Uh, right, depending. So now we need to repair our screws. Oh, sounds good, doesn't it? Right, we've got a series of screws. We've got some M516 screws. And some M5 12 screw screws, and they're both, um, rightly four millimeters. 
there's our screws. Now I'm going to use my little magnetic pot to put them in. So they don't go rolling off my bench somewhere. Never to be found again. So out of the packet, that's step two. It says on the packet that it is step two. Now I'm not going to put it back in the box. I'm going to put them on the side so I don't get confused. And I look for the other packets. Right, so we have some 16s there. One, two, three, uh, four. Oh, hang on. Four sixteens, yeah, four sixteens, and one, two, three, four, twelve millimeters. The same screws, just different lengths. Make sure you got a little Allen key, something you can easily handle. In this case, I'm just using a little micro screwdriver. It happens to have a Allen key on it. Yeah, you know, a little hex key. That's all it is. All right, very simple. So now. It looks like we need to install the front and back rails. And I'm going to start with the eeny mini mini mo. I don't think it actually matters. No. Uh, that is the front rail. I'll we'll just put it there for a second. I know it's not on the front yet. And this one's the back rail. All right, so here we are. It's all looking very interesting. Okay, and see the, it's all enclosed, you see, everything is integral, it's all, you know, we have this stepper motor arrangement here with, with this little uh, uh, time to pulley on there for the timing belt to go around, and same on that end there. It looks like these caps come off uh, with these screws here, so if you want a, you know, better, if you want better access, I imagine that is what that is for. So let's place that just there for a moment. Okay, the cardboard box is annoying me. <laughs> right, here we have this one here. And so, does it go to the top or does it go to the bottom? I believe, looking at these holes here, at the top here, there's a hole there and there's a hole there. Now I'm going to look at the actual destructions. And it says here that the ones in the top are the 16mm screws and the ones in the ends uh, or in, yeah, in the ends are the 12 millimeter screws. So that's pretty straightforward. So what I'll do is I'm going to get off my heavy butt and actually put some screws in. Let's say it's the next stage, so it won't be a good idea to deal with it, wouldn't you say? Let's place that over here like so. Hopefully we can tighten that into the line screw, little machine screw, tighten that into there. All right, I'm not going to do them tight at this stage, tight, tight. I'm just going to pull it to just hand tight. Because if you put this one, if, you, if I tighten this screw up, and then what, then what we'll get the next one in, they might not line up properly. Bring the microphone up a bit, sorry, get a bit closer. There we go. Do -do 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 -do. Hopefully, I don't need to edit this video, but look. So now we're going to uh, place the 12 millimeter screw, which I believe is in the back here. It probably threads into the ends of these uh, of this section of rail. I feel a hole there, but if there is a hole right at the back, just there. Make sure that's loose so I can line it up easier. Yes, that's loose enough. Now we can hopefully in there. So, oh, it's going in there. That's good. Tighten that, tighten that, just a little bit. Hand tight at this stage. It doesn't be crazy tight anyway, because there are, um, you know, only, only uh, four millimetre uh, bolts going into aircraft grade aluminium, which you could tear out the threads. So you don't want to do that, do you? Right, so that one that goes there nice and neatly. This is far, uh, more, yeah, way more straightforward than the Race 5 to put together. Big time. I mean, not, not just by a little bit, by a lot. There's less screws for a start. And that's a telltale sign, isn't it? Look, you don't need so many screws to put it together. Needs to say, it's obviously easier. I hope. So hopefully the actual... Uh, Belts and all that, uh, timing belts are all easy to store. 
hopefully. Now, I did have a little issue with the Ray 5. Um, the actual um, rollers for the actual uh, X axis for the carriage of the laser itself. It wasn't that great, it was a bit grindy, too tight. And I could see that actually end up then causing problems. I do apologise if the audio keeps going high and low and what have you, but that's because I'm one minute I'm close to the microphone because I'm moving about, and the next minute I'm not. Can I get this camera any higher? Crikey. There you go. I'm going to rise and fall on the camera at the moment. Right, here we are. So that's the back rail is installed. That easy. Just four tiny little screws. That was so, so easy. And now we've got to think about this front rail. This thing's huge. <laughs> it's actually out of frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move that camera forwards a little bit now, I think. Crikey. Right, so hopefully we can get this edge in. Yep, we've got it in there. Turn that light in the noise, is it? All right, here we go. I'm hoping I don't need... Oh, it's a bit. There you go. I hope I don't need to edit this video. I'm hoping... There we go. So I have to do the front edge. It's still right at the edge. Look at that. Righty. It's way bigger than the A5. It really is. Now, it's, uh, I believe it's 480 millimeter, um project size you can do with this laser. Whereas the um, Race 5 is 400 millimeter, So it's just reasonably bigger it's just way more refined it really is you know i'm trying to think of things to say i don't like about it yet um i can't yet sorry no right, we've got all right we'll be careful with these cables down here and obviously they're going to have to plug into something you don't want to get them trapped all right you've got these wires here I imagine they're going to be plugging in here or, or just little uh limit switches and stuff like that all right so it's as far back as I can get it. At least we've got the logo in. There's actually a controller unit just here, which you can't quite see. Let's bring it forward just some more. Look at that door. There you go. There's the controller. All right. There's no screen on the controller, unlike the Ray 5. I don't know why that is yet. I haven't, you know, actually investigated it. Because I'm quite new to this lasering luck. Yes. Do, 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 do. I'm going to keep saying laser. It's got nothing to do with the Dragonfire laser. That they're mounting on ships. No. This is a laser engraver. And cutter. Right. Right, so that's it. It's all the screws. Just one, just two more little screws got going. This is nuts. It's nuts, but it's also very cool. Right, I'm putting them screws in there. Hope you get the image right. Still a little bit. Quite so okay, going in. Don't tie it up straight away. Put the other screw in first, and then you can tighten both up. The, you know, at the same not at the same same time, but you know, one after the other. You know, so let's just tighten that up, and that one. Let's tighten that up. Okay, back with that. We'll do the same on this side. That's tight enough. Like I say, we don't have to graunch it down. There's no need. Right. Blimey, this thing is big. <laughs> right, so we have the x -act. Oh, crikey. Oh. Now, from me mentioning a moment ago, I had a few issues with the Raise 5, which I sorted out myself. And it it wasn't very easy to uh, you know, move the uh, this part of the rail here back, which was forced. It was all graunchy. Also, this side here on the race five wasn't aligned properly that was a little bit tight on the rollers that was easy to adjust that was but the x-axis was a nightmare to adjust because there wasn't really much adjustment in it. it when you adjusted it you cranked end up cranking the pulleys which means one edge of the pulley's touching and the other edge isn't so that wasn't such a great idea in my opinion so this feels so smooth wow i'm impressed i'm really excited about this i really am Hopefully we get some good results out of it. Okay, so that is step one done. And step two is done. So now we've got to think about step five. The limit switches, which means I'm going to need the packet number five. Where is it? <laughs> it's in this box somewhere. Um, 
Oh my god, don't, oh, don't, 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 don't. Should I get these packets out of there? Oh, I'll just get these out of there. Oh, a keys. I think that's it. Packet number five. Step five. Right. Take them out of there. I'm going to place it into my little pot here so I don't end up losing. Uh, oh, there's little screws. A tiny little screws. Oh, blimey. They're minuscule. And these are limit switches. Right, like I say, that is step number five. That comes with a little tiny packet of screws. Get them out, put them in the little magnetic trays. These little magnetic trays are absolutely ideal. Look at that. <laughs> You'll see that on end. Right, anyway, little things, please, little minds. They're both the same. And all they are is little micro switches. So it tells the actual uh, machine, the program on the machine, when the, the X axis or the Y axis has met its limits. Okay, so um, that's all it does. So it's probably on, off, on, off. Not on, then off. So it'd be on, off. A bit like a doorbell. So it's only on when you press it down. Otherwise it's off. Right, so we've got two of these. It's got, ah, are they both the same or not? That says Y. And that says X. So that tells me that they're not the same for some weird reason. Is it the plugs? Are the plugs different? No, I don't think so. They look, okay, well, they say, they say they're different. But yes, to bear that in mind, they're marked X and Y. All right, so one's going to go on the y axis, 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 <laughs> axis, and uh, the x will be going on the other one. So, yes, install x axis limit switch, which goes. Oh, I've got to tip this upside down. It's going to be it's going to go in there here somewhere. They have this stepper motor here. So, when this carriage unit moves across, it, it'll touch it and it'll stop. Now, I can see it's two very tiny. You, you probably can't see it, but there is two very tiny little holes here. And I imagine it's for these tiny, tiny little screws. Yes, I believe it is. The only thing is I'm going to say now is I've got to do that from underneath somehow. How the hell do you get that in there? Right, so one is the x-axis. Axis. You've got access. <laughs> right. So X, 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 that's Y. Flip it over there, get that right. And this one is the one I've got to use. Okay, so that, oh, I see. There's two little holes in the side there, okay? And, oh, what's that little, little spare pit? That's pit. No, it's not used up in. It's like a two way, you see. But this is going to be fiddly. This is going to be so fiddly. In some ways, it would have made more sense to install that. For as a first stage, I would have thought might be something worth investigating because at the moment, unless I pull this upside down and potentially scratch it on the bench, how am I supposed to get those screws and the, you know these little uh, uh, switches in just underneath here? So um, it shows you on, on the drawing how to do it, what way round they go. It was that way round. So this wire here has to go somewhere where I do not know at this stage. It's going to attach to something, probably to this uh, harness here. It's probably going to attach to that one, probably. Looking at it. Yeah, that makes sense. I think. <laughs> so, okay, I've got to get that in there somewhere. Don't lie me. I'm not, that's fiddly. That looks very, very fiddly. So what I'm going to have to do is put that out of the way over there. I'm going to actually have to tip it up. To do that i think now what's the best way to do that on that face or that face this way and i think i'm gonna bring it closer to you it's coming to you oh they like doing this right so the belt is already installed on the x-axis okay now you've got that area half just underneath here uh, i'm going to show you that let's bring it over here all right just here in the row you might be able to sit just about there's two little holes okay and underneath here we have a little space sorry about that <laughs> a little space underneath in there for that switch to go in 
Uh, to me, it looks really fiddly. But I'll give it a go. Might not be as bad as I think. You've got a belt in the way as well. Oh, hang on, how's that supposed to get in there? So that goes... Really? Right. Okay. Found a bit of an obstacle. It goes above or near the... It doesn't go on the outside there, does it? Ah! Then... No, it doesn't go in that gap. No, it doesn't go in the gap. It's not as bad as I thought. Oh! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Blimey. me. That just shows that the pictures need to be bigger. Right. Where those two little holes are, this switch didn't make any sense inside there because you've got the belt in there, you see? So it didn't make any sense to me at all. But you see, I'm going to have to place that on what we ran to go. Um, faces downwards. That's literally just got to go on there like that. Okay? And two little screws goes on there. So I can put this down again. Turn it over. It does sort of prove a point, though, that um, the drawings should be a little bit clearer. And what size Allen are they? Well, I've got the tidy. Right. I'm a bit like. Hopefully, I've got one that fits. <laughs> That is absolutely minuscule. Right, I'm looking for an Allen key to fit a very tiny little hole. Should I fit it? I might have to do it by hand and then tighten them up later. Uh, oh, I don't know, I might have the one. Let's have a look at this. So small, smaller than that. Right, I'm gonna have to do that by hand for now. Right, let's just get them on. So that we are, okay. The actual lever of the micro switch faces downwards. It's on the outside of the rail, not inside the rail, as I thought. So, the, and the idea is when this carriage comes along. It will engage with that switch. But I'll have to do it by hand because I, I don't even know if I've got an allen key that small. But I must have somewhere off. So that, that is minuscule. If not, I'll find one from somewhere. Do, 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 do. Right, that one goes in there. It looks like it's about what millimeter and a half that's six one sixteenth of an inch or something like that i'm just doing that by hand for the moment and i'll tighten them up later all right so far so good on that one and there should be another one somewhere where is that one mounted last time it was here somewhere i found it just there okay so that's the other access there's two tiny little holes literally uh just uh there one there and one there now we're going to look at the instructions. Pay attention to the hole position. Yes. Oh, there's two hole positions. Oh, so which one is it? It's the one further in. There's one nearer the middle. Looking at it. I don't know why there's two hole positions. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the one. It's that one there. So it'll be the same scenario again. The actual uh, micro switch needs to be facing downwards, like so, the little lever. So it's going to go on there, like so. So let's grab a screw. Right. Yeah, that, so far, actually, um, the quality of the thing, I'm, I think, is excellent so far i haven't used it yet remember though uh but the um 
the manual is well thought out, apart from those drawings aren't clear enough. We've got grey on, sort of light grey on dark grey, and um, they're really not clear enough. They need to be a little bit more contrasty and more definition in the areas where the details are. That's my, my personal opinion. Um, but I can't argue the fact that they are well thought out apart from that. The idea that, you know, you just take a packet out and the actual step is, you know, that you're doing is actually written on the packet is a genius move. Seems obvious, doesn't it? But how, how many come, uh, manufacturers, you know, don't do that? You know, they just expect you to know. All right, so it's on there. Just got to tighten that up a bit later. Let's be aware, be aware that there are two other holes just here. And you mount the limit switch to the one that's nearer the middle, towards the center. Otherwise, it's going to be the wrong place. I don't know why. I don't know why there's two sets there. Maybe there's an accessory or something that goes with it. Because I know you can get, like, um, bottle etching rollers and stuff like that all. So I don't know if it's got something to do with it at all. Yeah. Now, I'm looking at this drawing here. Although it's very, very small, you can clearly see on that drawing, here, just here, that the... Um, the two, you know, it, the, the two other holes are, are not the ones. These two holes you don't mount into, but just mount into those ones. That is clear there, but it's... I think what sometimes these companies, what they do is they make an assumption, because they've put these together so many times themselves, right? Doing development and stuff like that. They don't think they're layman. Somebody who's never actually done it before. So, okay, we're getting there, getting closer. So, we've now done one, two. Do you know what I haven't done? Do you know what I did? <laughs> I jumped from step two to step five, to step three and four. I don't think that's going to make any difference, though. Looking at it, no. Oh, dear me. See? Easy to make mistakes. I made mistakes on the last one, and I made mistakes on this one. But, you know, people make mistakes, don't they? As long as it's not, you know, as long as you work, you can see um, the mistakes that you've actually made. So, okay, then step three is these timing belts. And it is, it doesn't actually say what packet it is. It's just the timing belts. It's pretty obvious, to be fair. So there's no, you know, pack this or pack that. But this is step three. And you've got two timing belts. Both on the Y-axis. On the left and the right, and they'll be identical. Yeah. Right. Now this this is a bit of a fiddly bit. This is. Now I'm looking at this. Clasp position. It's a clasp. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, interesting. This this is different to the uh, raise five. Now the raise five. You had to pull it through the rail, and it had like a hammer screw that clamped it down on the end of the uh, on the end of the on, on the end of the actual um, the little belt timing belt. This one's got these weird little brass things on the end that slot. What I can tell at first glance, microphone, Marcus, uh, into that sl slot just there. Okay, so they're basically going there like that. All right, and that's that's the, that's you know hold them into place. So I have to travel around this roller here, at this end, just there, okay. Then back again, and go over the top of the actual pulley, which is at the other end. Now, in some ways, it'd be a good idea for me to put this piece of foam on here. All right, so I'll move this out of the way. This piece of foam that come with the uh, with part of the packaging of the laser. I'm going to put it on this cast iron here, and that way I can turn it upside down without actually damaging my laser. Yes. So, put that like so. Yeah, it's getting all bit flat. So, high density foam, and that's part of the packaging. Very well packaged, I must say. This thing looks impressive. Now, currently, looking at the actual uh, website, it is. Let's have a look, I can show you that. There you go. That is what they raise five. And currently it's listed on here at, at what price is that? 
it's reduced 600 off at the moment and it's a uh, $1,099 at the moment. That's that. There you go. So now what I'll do is I'm going to turn it upside down, use the bit of foam it comes with, and that way, don't lift it by this, <laughs> and try not to allow it to just uh, roll backwards and fall forwards. So don't don't tip it. What to end end up like that because you can end up damaging it. Tip it open gently, does it? Knock your microphone as you do it. <laughs> right, and then we've got two sides to do here. One here, okay. What I'll probably do is just flip it round each time. I can just show you. I'll put you that on here. Hopefully, that'll stay there. There you go. Just move that over a little bit. There you go. So, you can see what limit switches do here now. They've got this limit switch here. It's not back here. Can you see that? Just there. And then, as it comes across here, that'll tell the programmer. It's gone to its um, well as far as it can go basically, and it'll stop stop it from continuing to uh, try to operate because obviously that would be a bit silly, cause damage maybe even. All right, so we need a timing belt. And we have one side that's got to go around the roller, which is there's a cogged roller one end this end here at the moment. Let's put that. Out. Hope you can see that. Can I get that any brighter? Oh, that's as bright as I'm gonna get it. Do that a little bit. Right, so I can see here in the end here we have I'm gonna move this microphone out of the way because I can keep knocking it. In the end here there is there's a pulley in there. Not pulley, a uh, like a cog. You know, like a toothed toothed pulley. And needless to say, you need the teeth on your belt to go around the teeth. Of that pulley, um, it looks a bit of a fiddly thing to do. So there is two screws in the back here. I don't know whether or not you need to remove those end caps. Does it show that you need to remove the end caps? Uh, no, it doesn't. So hopefully we don't need to. But somehow I need to thread that through the crotch. Oh, how are we supposed to do that? So that's going to go under there like so. Okay. With the teeth facing upwards. So, we can, so they'll be facing face, um, back to back. And it's got to go around that end cap. Now, there is a tight. I think that hand screws aren't going that small. So how do you wind it around there? That looks fiddly. Well, this could never end. These things are sent to try us. That's probably a really easy way of doing this, isn't it? One is to remove the end cap. Problem is, I don't know, I think that's uh and the keys are the screws. Everything's tiny, it's hard to see anything. So screwed right here, is it screws? It might be screws actually. Not screws. Oh, I haven't got an key that small. No. Find one in my old pot. Or the. Hope I've got one in there somewhere. Be those talk talk bits. That'd be so annoying if I haven't got one. Oh, that's a screwdriver. 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 Little flatty. Little flatty, oh, it go in there. Doesn't look very hopeful. Right, so that's no good. All my old ones. Right, so how do we do that? Can I get it around that way? Oh, you can do it quite easily. See, I was worrying about nothing. Right, there you go. You just loop the end over 
um, there's enough room just to loop that over the end. So that goes under that side, so pull it through a bit, like so. And then I'll go behind this roller here, grab a little screwdriver or something. Just for the purpose of lifting that up. This thing is adjustable. Right, so round that one there. All right, so we ran both of the pulleys with and the uh, tooth pulley and the roller. All right, I'll just bring it round and slot that into there. So there's no cutting to do or anything like that. All right, we just need to make sure it's all the way through. And then we've got on the other side here, and that should slot into there. Now this needs tension. Currently, as you can see, it's a bit loose. Yes, I would say that's pretty loose for you. So that will need tensioning. And just, there's an Allen key screw, an Allen screw in there, which is the same as the ones you put it together with. And you can tension it on that pulley. Just make sure it's not uh, resting on anything so it can't, so it doesn't sit true. Now it's fine, it's in perfectly true. And then we can just tighten that up. Here, so show you. Sorry, um, as me yabbering on and not paying attention, you see, we've got that it goes around that roller and then it hooks on behind this. Let's see, show you this here, this on there, it's a bit fiddly, you know, hang around a bit. There you go, so the belt slots into those two slots there like two keys and then you tension the belt and there's the other one to do as well you have two of those to do and you, and you tension the belt on here just there okay until the belt's at the right tension i haven't done it yet i'm just just just, do it so, just so just so it doesn't actually mess up yeah get messed up now you need this in the correct positions because it is a timing belt so both sides need to be the same don't they it sounds like to, yeah standard reason to me so now i've got to do the same on this other side we'll part of the y axis there's one step of motor but there's a, like a gear like a shaft like drive shaft that goes all the way through here to the other end all right so it transfers the step of motor power to the other side and then that's then transferred via the actual um uh, bounce to the extra access rail so i'll do exactly the same thing again i'll kind of loop that over like i did last time so all i did was that and i managed to sort of thread that behind the roller and it's the tooth roller So it's a bit fiddly. Now you can't see it because it's all enclosed. Uh, what I should have done is take the covers off, but um, I haven't got, I haven't found it yet anyway. Uh, uh, Allen key, that'll fit him. Might mean I might have to go and buy one. Right, just so I've got one. Right, so now we've got this here. This one is going to be going under this carriage. This one here is going to go into the little key slot just there okay so then it stops it for pulling out all right and we're going to pull it through now i'm not editing this video i'm just putting this together just so you can see uh real time so you know i'm not messing with you all right because it is pretty easy to be fair it's, it's not difficult now i'm pulling this through here there's a piece of tape on here I don't know what the better tape is for, but there's a bit of tape and it's getting in the way. I don't know what what it is there for. Can I pull it out of the way or not? Is that going to interfere with the? Where is that then? Ah, there's a cable there. Right, I might redo that. That's there's this cable here. They've got a piece of tape holding the cable out of the way. That I don't like. All right, that's my first grumble. 
right well second part because i wasn't that keen on drawings the manual um so you mind the stuff though it's easy to sort out so yeah right this now has to go around this fully here i'm just going to place something screwdriver or anything in there so i can ride it up the screw like right, so that's yeah literally just riding it up there like that push, and then push it through basically just push it against the allen key Okay, so that's on there like so, and now we can do exactly the same with that, and place that into that key slot just here, on the side here. Now there's going to be a little bit of slack at the other end, it probably needs to jump over two for two, so you get the slack on the other end, on this end, otherwise it's just going to um, be out of sync with the other side. And if you find it's pulling it at, you know, as you go backwards and forwards and it's trying to pull it, sort of cranking it, like, uh, like crabbing it. Well, that's because you've got the pulley is not you've got in the wrong position on the teeth of the pulley. So it's still slack on there. So that needs to that's good there. I should be able to get it in there. So currently that is like it's too. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so I grab the Allen key that I was using. That one, and then I can loosen this screw again. Again, and then it should be right because this is a bit better. That's it, that's nearly there, slide right over, that's in. That one's a bit tight than last time. Now I will adjust that before I turn the machine on. So what is the next stage? Because like I said, I did I missed, I missed these two. So it's like one, two, three, four, and I went one, two, five. So that's a bit silly. Right, so now we're looking at the actual um head the actual laser module you need to fit that one so i'll flip this back over again and there'll be two um screws to hold that on thumb screws Let's turn it around like so probably don't need the at the moment Right, kids, because it's a monster, isn't it? I literally can't get, can I get the camera any higher? A little bit. There you go. Um, right, so there it is. All right, it's on. Yeah, obviously, I'll need leveling up. But what I'm going to do with this, well, well I've started making a, an actual uh, base for the Murray 5. And the reason for that is that way, so I can actually make sure I get the honeycomb in exactly the right position and it's easier to work out exactly where everything is. It's all fixed in place. Just allowing for rise and fall if I, if I want to. So it should it move. Uh, now I'm eyeing up with the back rail, all right? Between here and that back rail. And to me, it looks a little bit skewish. Just by a tad. I would say that is a little bit closer than that is. But we'll adjust that uh, in doing setup. So uh, for this next stage, is stage four, which then we'll be jumping to six, because <laughs> I'm an idiot. So laser module, M320 screws, uh, or screw. First install the laser module on the X-axis frame, then tighten the M320 uh, handle screw to fix the laser module. Okay. So we'll grab the module up here. Slightly bigger in the actual physical size, but it's twice the power of the Ray 5. Here's the module. It has this little depth gauge here as well, so you, you know your focus gauge. And we've got uh, this uh, 
that, that times it's not it matchy. It has a dovetail assembly, so you've got this dovetail. Dovetail slide, so that's got to go in there like so. Okay. And then there's a screw got to go in there. I think so it doesn't go further down than it, sh than it can. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't bash down, uh, I think. You've got your focal uh, block, what they call the focal block. You run M320 screw. So we need the step four. That's step four packet. <laughs> right, I'm looking for a step four packet. I don't know what the seem to have one. You know, I was looking for a tiny um, Aaron key. They supply one. Just there. So, a good idea to check all your packets first before you start. So, you do get one, and also you get one to do these nuts and bolts here as well. So like I say, you don't want them overly tight. You just, just, just so. Right? But it does mean I can tighten these uh, limit switches now. Actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't fit the limit switches. That's annoying. It's not as small as it needs to be. Oh, hang on, there's another one in there. There you go. So they provide you with one, two, three, four Allen keys. So that, yeah, does that fit? Oh, not very neat, but it does fit. Good, that one's in there. Don't over tighten them. Remember, we're stronger than the tiny, tiny little screws. Let's rip all the threads out. Let's do it just so. This one's doing it now. That's good. Right. So we do have all the Allen keys supplied. Right. You might not want to use them, but that's up to you. And there's some tweezers. What they're for, I don't know. So I've got that slid into place. I now need the... Step four, pack it. One, this should not lose everything. So it's one M20, okay, where's that then? Well, I, I appear to have, is it in there? Nope. Nope. No, 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 it's missing. Right, there's a screw missing. That's not very helpful. It wasn't in there anyway, so... Hmm, that's not very helpful at all. The screw, one of the screws is missing. But one, two, right? We've got the um, M320... Hang on, no, they are the ones. They don't show them like that one here. Okay. That's strange. Hmm. Right, what does it say here then? So the first install of those X on the X axis frame, then tighten the M320 handle screw, which is one of these. Okay. To where? God, how are you supposed to get your hands in there? Don't like that idea. Right, where's it go? Got the focal block. Can't physically see where the screw goes. There's holes in here. One, two, three. So when you're sometimes you just need to how to put it, modify or change what you get. Because I don't like that. That's that is fiddly as hell. That is that's the that's, yeah. Um, that's silly, alright? You get two of these screws. Can you put them both in? No, just one there at the moment. I'm showing you put one in, so you keep one spare. Oh, yeah, it is spare. It says on here, an M320 screw, one of, and you get a spare M320 screw. That's your spare. Right, if you've got a spare one of these and you want to not lose it, 
I would suggest you taper to something that doesn't matter. Like, for instance, a cable somewhere or something just with a bit of tape just so you don't lose the thing. Otherwise, you'll put it away somewhere and forget where you put it. And then you'll you'll lose that one. And then you won't know where where your spare is. I don't actually like this idea. I like the, I like the dovetail, but you can't get your fingers in there. If you've got fat fingers like me, that's really awkward. Because you have to set your focus, you see, on this laser. You know, otherwise it'll fall. Like so. Right, you, put that, you put that thing down. There's like a little uh, focus block that goes down. And then you tighten it to wherever it goes onto the... Um, like so. But it's so fiddly. I actually... Is it the right hole? Oh, even. Right, so, oh, I see that. It, I know why. Is it up? Because I've got one side not even on the on the flat surface, on the iron bed. So, there you go. Anyway, so far, so good. That is a spare, so I'll put it in there. Oh, it's not magnetic. It's not magnetic. <laughs> put them in there as well. Put that away. I don't know about this sort of thing, but. Whenever you get these sort of spanners, you know. If you've got a proper spanner, use that because these things damage the nuts and bolts. I'll move this over here at the way. What is next? It's saying eh, that wall. No, I've done that bit. Limit switches are done. All right, we've done that. It's, it's before using the laser engraver, make sure you level it up on the workbench. These have adjustable feet, by the way. All right, the Rage 5 don't have adjustable feet, these ones have little twisty adjustable feet. Yeah, which is very good. So you can level it up. So you can, yeah, you can unscrew and, and screw these feet on the bottom. There's four feet that you can adjust. Like there's a bit of ply when you get with it, a little bit of birch ply. So you have a little practice with it. Right. So we're now on step six. And step six is. Well, it looks like some cabling has been done. It says, install connection cables. There are six cables to be installed, including two limit uh, switch cables, two motor cables, and one lod uh, laser uh, module uh, cable, and one adapter board terminal cable. Okay, so we'll do that next. Now, some of these things will be fairly obvious. Like here, we have this little, you know, cable here. Now I know that this cable here has a limit switch. All right, I don't know what that one's for then. Oh, which one do you connect there then? There's two of them, are they the same? They look the same as well. That's not to confuse you. Does it say anything on here? Ah, Y axis. And the white one doesn't have anything on it. So that black one goes with the black one. Just here. Push them together until they snap, snap together. Gives us a little like safety kind of locking mechanism on them. Okay. It's quite big this one. I can't actually move the camera about. A bit annoying. Um, so it's that one. All right. It's not think there's any cave in this end. It's already pre pre done. And over here we have the other uh, limit switch. Which will connect to the cable, and we have what's going on over here. Now, this wiring loom here, obviously, it's got to be able to freely move backwards and forwards. Um, and on here, we have an X and a Y axis. Yeah. So that is going to be a limit switch, and that is going to be the stepper motor. All right. Limit switch, stepper motor. You can't put them in the wrong place. No. Because they can only go one way round. That's the limit switch. And this one here is the stepper motor. Like I say, it can only go one way round. Okay, so you can't get that wrong. And then we have the other end here. Which is going to connect to the stepper motor. In the back, in the back, the, yeah, the far uh, rail. There's a stepper motor mounted on one end, which is mounted on this end. And then there'll be a cable 
oh it's found, it's found underneath there yeah and we've got two plugs on here okay all right i've connected one two step two uh limit switches i'll just put this to one side again because i'll put it upside down again so let's grab the bit of foam right so you get the bit of foam with it not for this purpose but it's actually quite handy it won't damage anything i'm going to place this upside down on there again Try not allowing things to slide backwards and forwards. It won't do them any good. Right. I've got this crazy arrangement here with this tape, which I'm going to do something about in, in a, later on. Where's the plug that goes into the... Oh, there must be a plug somewhere that goes into that. Right, that one's connected to that. Oh, I see, that goes there. Ah, oh, I see. No, it doesn't go to the back rail where the stepper motor is. No, it connects to the actual um, laser module itself. So let's turn it back and probably up again. Although, I might see, is it possible to tidy this up? I'm a bit worried that this bit of tape is going to end up sticking to things. Like the belt itself. Oh, I see this. There's a plug in there. Okay, I don't think that stays on. We remove that, and we appear to have a plug there. Is that what's supposed to go to the stepper motor? Okay. Well, we have a cable there. It's going to there. So I don't know why that is. I'm not sure if, if you can see that there, there is behind the belt here, there's two more plugs which aren't obvious. It should show on the manual, but this manual is so difficult to see. All right, so we've got a cable, yeah, cable run going to the actual uh, laser module. I need to secure this wire again, I think, because I don't think that is used. I might be wrong, but I don't think it is. I think that's for maybe an, um, an accessory. Right, okay. So let's turn it back the right way around. We have this cable here, which attaches to a socket that's made in the back of the actual laser itself and there's two uh two sockets just in the back here show you one up there and one up there and we've just got to slide them into there one by one so i have to put them saying because it's a bit fiddly right that was in all right and now i'm just doing the other one <laughs> That's the thing, is it just keeps what goes back and forth, isn't it? Don't want to go back and forth, I don't think it'll do it any good. Right, sort of slide it in, then to it's all the way in. It should grip it, they shouldn't just come straight out again, right? It should snap in. Okay, so that's the cables attached. We have, hmm, right, looking at this. The thing is, that you've got. Can't touch that into there because it... hmm, maybe you can. Right, so that one's going to go into this cable grip thing, just basic Velcro grip. Right, so to hold that one into place. Does that work? And then probably get the whole one that way around, like so. Probably like that. And hopefully, there's enough slack for that to be able to run backwards and forwards without an issue. Hopefully. Right, I'm going to move it back forwards manually. Just... So I've got this wire here at the moment, which I'm not very happy about because I could interfere with the limit switch. So it's going to require some additional. 
clipping here and there to make sure nothing interferes with that limit switch there. So if it can it go, I'm going to move it very slowly over. Oh, feels pretty smooth. So that travels all the way up there with that amount of slack. Hopefully it'll better go all the way back without any issues. Now there is something else going to have to be mounted on here as well. Now that is supposed to go behind there. Cool, better don't like that. Not quite hard to get that in there, you know. You know, damaging her. Probably be, there you go, that's in. That's better. So should be enough room to go all the way back. Now I've got a bit of a twist in there and I don't like that. I wonder if I can get rid of that. Force it elsewhere. So just gonna do that like so, like so. Even if I've got a oh, that's better. Yeah, that's better, I think. Right, so we've got our carriage on there nice. And we've got a plug oh I've got a plug here which I don't know where it goes. I imagine it's gonna go into there. Now do I have another cable to fit here? Okay. We have our limit switch here, which is connected into that one. Hmm. Turn over the Connet limit switch cable. An adapter board, a terminal cable, and the marker, a marked line to the terminal. All right, is there another piece of wire somewhere? What have I missed something there? Because we have. Oh, hang on, there we go. There we go. It was hiding, it was. Just here, okay? We've got this. In there like so, and then this one will be the limit switch just here. Uh, and that'll probably be the, the limit switch so that connects to the limit switch on this particular module unit here. <clears throat> okay, it's gonna go that way around. It's pretty straightforward. I should, I should have snapped in there. Should excuse. You should feel a positive connection, but that feels like it isn't actually connecting properly. It has. It's gone as far as it would do, but I like they they don't have a really good um how to put it positive feel with the actual lock on the um on that connector here, and that's the one for the limit switch on this X rail um X axis. But also on here. We've, We've got this, um, I don't know if you can say that, let's move this out of the way a little bit. We've got this limit switch here, and unfortunately, it doesn't sit square. So it's all mounted on, I'm looking at it, it's slightly skewed. It's not going to make a blind bit of difference to the operation of it, but it's just not sitting flat. I would like to see that sitting flat. So as you tighten these screws up here, it's basically you know, squeezed up here, and it's not tight on the front edge. No, I don't know if the other one's done the same thing. Yeah, the other one's done the same thing. <clears throat> That's going to be down to the bang. Right, so let's flip around again. I'll take this foam out of the way. It's, it's getting in the way. This is a long video. It's a full length video putting this together. Right, so where do we go from here? We're done six. Okay. We've got uh, the laser module connected. We've got the program module connected. We've got the limit switches are fitted. Okay. So, yeah, I think it's all starting to look hanky dory. And we've only got two more steps to do, according to this. One of the steps I've already done, which is to um, secure this cable. But also, with this machine, it comes with the air pump. And the nozzle for the air pump for the air assist is all in here. All right, so is that pump isn't no, but the actual um, nozzle and stuff is. But you've got to mount the pump somewhere. The pump comes with a hose, like this one here. <laughs> right, so that is the hose. 
Okay, so we just want to cut that off. Lose my voice now. You know, this is an unedited version. I might make an edited version as well of this particular blazer. Now, on my last one, this uh, tap I mounted near the actual pump. But you could, look at this, you could actually mount the tap on there if you wanted to. On top of this tap, basically, you can, alt, you can adjust the flow of air that way if you want to. But what does it tell you to do? When installing the air pump uh, air guide tube, it needs to go through this hole, which is this hole. Okay. Uh, where, where is it saying about the tap? Don't say anything about the tap. Nope. It doesn't really matter. You can put it wherever you want. Now this particular one is quite clever because the uh, air pump is controlled by the programmer. So here is the air pump itself. And this uh, end here is what attaches to the, the hose. And this end connects onto the side of the controller just just here. I know you can't see it, but there is actually a, there's a connector just here. On the side of the program or the controller, you need to be clear of that, and that will control your air pump. Now you've got to think where you're going to position this air pump in relation to the actual um, position on your bench, because obviously the air pump can't go, you know, it's got to go somewhere where the hose is going to reach for a start. The other thing is these air pumps are a little bit noisy. So you've got to think about that as well. It could be a little bit annoying, to say the least. So uh, yeah. Should I fit it on there? Consider it short. I don't like the idea of that waving back and forth. That's good. No, actually, I'm going to put it near the air pump. And the reason for that is this is potentially a hook that could get hooked up onto something. And I don't think it's a very good idea. So I'm going to fit it long hose in that way. Before I do that, though, I want to secure the actual. No, that was pushy. Yeah. Right, then here's a quick you know, uh, release type thing. Just push fit, push it in. And there's a little blue ring on on there. If I pull that over, you can see it. That little blue ring. If you push it down, you can release the pipe. Okay. So I'm going to secure the hose to the same length as everything else. So we don't get a jam up. So wherever that is, that could be uh, in there as well. Do, 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 do. Well, see what you don't want, you don't want anything being able to get caught up there because it could be problematic if that happens. Just uh, place that under there, through there, through there, mm, maybe it'd be better with the top of that one. It does come with some little tie wraps so you can get a little bit more over, yeah, a little bit more carried away with your tie wrap. And you don't want any of this stuff to get caught on that as it's moving backwards and forwards because you'll get a, like a, a jam. You get a jam that just the machine will stop halfway through the burn, and that's really annoying when you actually uh, had like, I don't know, if it's been running for about an hour or something silly, and then um, it stops partway through. That could be very, very frustrating. Right, there you go. There's that one there. I think I'm quite happy with that. You should say my slack. Oh, hang on, that wire's come out. Let's see if we can have that in then. The wire is coming out. Of it. These connectors don't feel very positive. This bench there, don't they? You should feel it with a click, but they don't. Not all of them. Some of them did. They can pull out, can they? Yeah, you could put that during the actual burn itself. Let's make sure and push that all the way down. Oops. That's all the way down. Oh, that's a bit naughty. Should be able to pull out like that. All right. <clears throat> so I'm probably going to tie wrap this hair as well, I think. So it can't actually physically be tugged up. So if I put some tie wrap behind the wire hair, that will stop against there. And it won't be, a, you can't accidentally tug it up and pull the wire out. Or get caught up and pull the wire out. 
so that's got to go to the air pump the air pump is going to have its own position that's going to be connected let's move this over here big box on the floor now trip over so move this over so we've got room on the front there is where the actual air pump okay connects to just on there well of course i kind of showed you earlier but not very clearly so that'll connect in there you go one way around so you slide it in there like so and that connects in there and that control the air pump and this end here okay just slides onto the air pump there right now i'm not doing operational on this at the moment um that'll be another video we've got a series of buttons here you've got a key uh like a security lock here fire key um you've got your on off buttons there um i've got a red light i'm not sure what that one's for yet i will find out later the big red one at the end here obviously that's going to be your emergency stop yeah in case you have a problem or a jam up or something you will stop in the hurry so that makes a lot of sense we have a usb type you know like printer cable um for connection to your pc you have an sd slot here micro sd slot here and you've got a lan port i believe it's lan port there was it narrow than lan port was that lan port must be um looks a bit that more like telephone port <laughs> i think it's probably glasses i'm wearing and then this one here's your power supply there <clears throat> power supply is a brick right like so so that you literally just plug that into the top of the unit like so and you have something neat and tidy to have that mounted so it's not in the way it's a kettle lead that attaches into that to provide power to the unit but we're going to be doing that in a first use of this video of not this video of the next video of it so there we go we're back again right so we put it together and although it's a very long video i reckon you could put this together in 20 minutes quite happily it's just so darn easy let's bring it around a bit so you can see it a little bit better okay yeah there it is all right it's literally going to be sitting over just oh, i'll show you it's going to be sitting a bit like let's remove this air pump and the power supply so we'll pull it off the bench it's going to be sitting there just like there okay next to the other laser i think it's going to be pretty spiffing that it is so i'm going to operate that from the computer over here i have both lasers running because you can do simultaneously with the light burn software you can have more instance running at the same time which is quite good or well, i believe so it looks like you looks like you can obviously you have to be on a different um com port so yeah it's all together I think it's okay i need to go around and check on the nuts and bolts i've got to adjust these uh, belts up as well uh, these belts here they've got to be adjusted um but yeah on face value so far i i reckon it looks that camera keeps moving <laughs> that's annoying <laughs> i don't know what it's turn i think i'll turn it off i'll oh, fix now that's it that's better that's tracking me <laughs> as you can see here yeah, that belt needs tightening okay just there it's too that's too loose all right needs to be a little bit of tension in that i need to also um tune the x-axis rail so it doesn't actually sit crabbed to the um, back rail so it's all square um i may also make it a new um like a bench top for it so i can lock it all into position so I, so basically every time i do anything with it I always end up in the same place and that way i want to do alignment with the honeycomb which i happen to have here okay which is going to be going underneath the laser okay if you want to know what it is all right the honeycomb and that's for laser cutting not engraving you don't need that for engraving but you need it for laser cutting so anyway hope you enjoyed my uh very long uh, video of uh <laughs> putting together assembling the uh, longer ray oh well i've done the ray five before but i mean the longer b1 40 watt laser like i say it's on offer at the moment at 1100 dollars and yes this was a sponsored video because longer sent me this laser that they did now i might actually make an edited version of this video as well 
but I'll also be uploading this one uncut. And that way, you know that I'm not lying to you. I don't sound deep, but you know, yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, please click the like button and maybe subscribe to the channel and maybe hmm, the little bell icon because then you get one fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. And I know you'll be excited about that. Toodaloo. Yeah, really long video that one, wasn't it? Crikey. One hour, 20 minutes. Flip it now because I live streamed it. Toodaloo.